pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Councilmember Irby, Councilmember Page, Councilmember Wassinger, Here. Councilmember Gray, Councilmember Dolan, Here. Councilmember Trakis, Councilmember Carter. Here. Oh, thank you. Mr. Chair, we have a quorum. We have no bid openings this evening. We'll move communications. Mr. Chair. Um, should I move for the approval of the journal? Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Too quick. I move for uh, the approval of the journal of the meeting of July 25th, 2017. Second. Is there a second? Yes. Second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Journal of July 25th, 2017 is approved. Um, we have no bid openings this evening, so we'll move to communications. Mr. Chair, there are no tax compromises this evening, so we will move to zoning matters. Receive file on the county councilor be directed to pre prepare the appropriate legislation, please. So ordered. Item number. Go ahead. Item number two six district. Receive file to the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation, please. So ordered. We have no road and bridge matters, so we'll move to other communications. Under other communications, item number one. Receive and file, and that will be the order. Item number two, six district. Receive file and county council will be directed to prepare appropriate legislation, please. So ordered. Item number three. Receive and file and that will be the order. Item number four, six district. Um, receive file and the request, Mr. Chairman, that the matter be held on the order of business and referred to a committee in the whole. Um, if possible. So reason. ordered and we will uh, work on the referral and a date to be announced. Thank you. Item number five. Receive file and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation and that will be the order. Item number six. Receive file and the county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. Um, same motion through uh, six through nine. Item number 10, third district. Receive file and the county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation, please. Um, so ordered. Item number 11, 6th district. Receive file and the county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation, please. So ordered. Item number 12, 6th district. Same motion. So ordered. Please read the add-ons. No add-ons this evening, Mr. Chair. Um, report from the county executive. No report. Um, no special committee reports will proceed with the public forums. We have 13 speakers this evening, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, please um, approach the podium when your name is called and uh, give us your name and address. We'd ask everyone to keep their comments to three minutes. First speaker. First speaker this evening is Lynn LeBeau. Dear council members and Steve Stanger, I'm here tonight to voice my opinion regarding the petition to approve the amended application for rezoning by McManus Construction and Snow Pro filed with the county. Mr. Trekis, because of your diligence to, to zoning issues, the residents of District 6 have had all the intended uses of this operation disclosed to them, which were withheld from the public at the Planning Commission hearing. However, it always seems like the rubber stamp method is utilized when it comes to zoning issues in unincorporated St. Louis County. And this is no different. When a new amended application is submitted with changes, the residents ought to be notified of the changes and a new public hearing to be held. Is this legal? not to have a new hearing? Why did the Planning Commission not want to hear from the people and how the unintended oversight of non-disclosure will impact the area in which residents live and travel to their homes? Or about the impact of these chemicals will have on the Matisse Creek 
through ground seepage as a result of storing the huge amount of de-icing chemicals. The Planning Commission is appointed by the Acting County Executive. So maybe the Commission is more concerned with rubber stamping the wants of the County Executive versus the people of unincorporated St. Louis County. I also have a sidebar that I've been wanting to say for a long time, since he's not here. Steve, it was never about the name that you called me several years ago in public. Steve, it was when you threatened me by wanting to call the police. This is truly called the abuse of your authority, which is noted. And I suggest, Mr. Hardy, you take note of that as well. Thank you. Uh, next speaker. Next speaker is Dan Hyatt. <clears throat> Thank you, council members. My name is Dan Hyatt. I'm from Maryland Heights, Missouri. I'm here today with a few other people to ask you to do a repeal and replace on Prop P, because as we've seen recently, our worst fears have come true. While we support our police, the Prop P was supported by four symbiotic relationship parties of Mr. Stanger, and not the public. It does not reflect the public, and it needs to be redone. I propose that the new one have, uh, that the cities must maintain their current police budget in addition to what they get, that the police salaries should be boosted to within 20% of the mean to make sure that the officers are properly compensated. That's the mean of the county uh, salaries. Uh, money can be used for more officers, and the money can be used for personal safety equipment, such as tasers and ballistic vests and such like that. Uh, I'd also like to suggest to the county that they consider doing what Los Angeles County, Clark County, Nevada, and a few other counties, a lot of other counties around the state uh, country have done, which is a website where citizens can uh, lodge complaints, uh, ask questions, file police reports, and such like that. It's very effective. It dramatically reduces the amount of calls that officers have to go on that they don't like to go on. Like a car burglary where the burglar is four hours gone, or a car theft that the car is gone and you just fill out the information and everybody's happy. So, um, again, Prop P was pushed by four parties who have a symbiotic relationship with Mr. Stanger, TIFFs, and, and contracts, and stuff like that. And I would like to see a replacement that represents the people and the county, not a few political cronies. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Next speaker is Charles Bell. Good evening, I'm Charles Bell. I'm an architect with an office in Clayton. I live in Webster Groves. I am representing the Creve Corps Park Coalition of the American Institute of Architects, Open Space Council, Missouri Coalition for the Environment, Sierra Club, Greenway Network, St. Louis Audubon Society, and U.S. Green Building Council. St. Louis County Park sponsored a proposal by St. Louis Blues and Legacy Ice Foundation to develop a 40-acre ice skating complex in the north end of Creve Coeur Lake Park. This proposal skated through the council <coughs> approval in the last several days of 2016. The public really never knew what happened. But because this proposed development is an indoor building complex in a floodplain and is in direct violation with land and water conservation funds, the Missouri Department of Natural Resources required a public information meeting. This happened on January 25th, a well-orchestrated PR campaign by the proponents. The DNR also required an environmental assessment. The St. Louis Economic, Economic Development Partnership prepared the draft report. The coalition responded with this report, which includes assessments from scientists, geological engineers, environmental attorneys, and other professionals. 
This report includes corrections to many of the errors and oversights of the EA draft report. This report also includes 18 alternative development sites, including empty shopping centers, abandoned industrial sites with already developed infrastructure, parking, highway, public transportation. We filed our report directly with the DNR and also directly with the National Park Service. We also filed a petition of 8,000 signatures and comments. This six acres of massive industrial scale building is 11 million cubic feet, the volume of three Walmarts towering 65 feet over the water level within shouting distance of the lake edge in a floodplain contributing to the massive problems of flooding everywhere. This is a lose-lose result for everyone <clears throat> except maybe the tenant. This would irreparably damage Creve Corps Park with such a dominant and introverted use that boating, biking, sailing, picnicking would all be severely compromised forever. Extensive traffic congestion will eventually cause the intended outdoor park users to go elsewhere. This development would remove parkland, destroy open space and park vistas, damaging the park, and does not add a single attribute to this rich outdoor environment that's enjoyed by a million users annually. That's three minutes, Mr. We know that there are better sites where this project can be developed more responsibly by Legacy Ice and St. Louis Blues. Let's do the right thing and stop this from happening. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Mr. Chair, the next speaker is Ben, and I'm, we're going to have to ask the speaker to pronounce and spell his last name for us. <laughs> My name is Ben Centuria, that's S-E-N-T-U-R-I-A, uh, University City. The lead story of the past Sunday, Post-Dispatch, asks an important question. How do we interpret the intent of Proposition P? The wording of the proposal says, for the purpose of providing funds to improve police and public safety. Quotes in the Post article from representatives from Chesterfield, Clarkson Valley, Ellisville, and Clayton reflect the debate and confusion across the country, a county interpreting the term public safety. County Executive Stinger urges all municipal officials to spend Proposition P tax funds as they were intended. To do otherwise, he said, would violate the law and the trust of county residents who voted overwhelmingly to pass this proposition. That doesn't help. In fact, the law and its wording is the source of the problem. <clears throat> if we want to keep the trust of county residents so that they'd be willing to support future funding proposals, then the key question is, what did the electorate understand and intend when they voted for Proposition P? To that end, the challenge for elected officials of the county and the municipalities is to ask the voters of each jurisdiction what they understood and intended by voting for improving peace and public, police and public safety. <clears throat> and then develop a plan consistent with that intent and to be transparent in that process. And by pursuing this process, it clarifies the intent and honors the constituents. On the other hand, if voters feel ripped off, they'll be hard to, uh, they'll be hard to sell in the future for any other funding proposal. So what might this look like? I suggest a three-step process. Step one, each jurisdiction would solicit suggestions for the expenditure of Prop P funds and circulate those ideas, or at least at the minimum, publicize a proposed plan in a way that will attract citizen attention. Step two, each jurisdiction would then provide an open hearing or similar vehicle for citizens to react to that plan or ideas. Step three, each jurisdiction would then publicize its final plan for expending the new money and would periodically report on those expenditures to the public. Each year, that three-step process would then be repeated. By adopting this transparent process, you as county elected officials would set a standard for municipalities to do the same thing. And that would build the much needed currency of public trust in our political process. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Ben.
Next speaker is Kat Thackeray. Kat Dockery, um, Unincorporated St. Louis County District 6. I'm here representing the Open Space Council tonight. Uh, I am the executive director of a charity, a 501c3 charity here in St. Louis that's got a long-standing history working with St. Louis County Parks to help create public parks and to also do restoration work, tree plantings. Our organization is uh, quite well known throughout the community for running a program called Operation Clean Stream. I'm coming to you uh, because over the last week, I've had a significant amount of calls and emails uh, directly to our organization <coughs> regarding the trees that have been cut down at Creepcore Lake Park. Uh, people in the community are asking what's going on and why this is happening. Uh, several of them have tried to reach out to St. Louis County Parks and have not been able to get a response. I am included in that, and I have the emails to show you. Uh, St. Louis County Parks has not been in communication regarding this, what's going on with it. Instead, we have received one email from Cordell Whitlock on behalf of uh, Steve Stanger's office, Council, uh, County Executive Stanger's office, and he has informed us that uh, this is a part of a stormwater drainage project. Uh, I think that, that it is highly concerning to a lot of citizens that if this project is indeed stormwater drainage and not grading and tree removal force uh, for the ice legacy facility, uh, that that has not been made more publicly available. There's no signage on, this, on the site, uh, and as you can imagine, a lot of citizens are starting to get concerned. Um, I would highly encourage the council to encourage the Parks Department to uh, put up signage and to make that plan public to help the public understand what's happening uh, and understand why those trees needed to come down. Um, both for my own benefit, so I don't have to keep trying to answer these emails that really I'm not versed in, uh, but also for, for the sake of maintaining respect and transparency for the county and county parks department. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker is Helena Webb. Hi, I'm Helena Webb um, from Baldwin. Um, I'm going to talk about Prop P as well. Um, the fact that municipalities are considering snow removal, potholes, etc., cetera, um, for the money from Prop, Prop P means to me, even though I voted for it, that the money is not needed for our police. Um, to address Ben's comment, I've never met him before, but Ben, um, my, our understanding was that it was for the police departments and for how they operate. As a voter, that's what I thought. As a voter, my husband voted against it because he didn't trust the government to use the taxes correctly. Um, I would like to say that I believe Prop P money should be uh, used to promote police protection, trust, and transparency for our officers and our citizens. Um, it should be used to increase to cover increased demands on mental health issues, heroin use, and opioid use in our county and in Baldwin. Um, additional training or personnel in these areas might be a good idea, um, since these problems are apparently getting worse and not better. Um, I think they should be used also to reduce racial disparity on traffic stops. Um, I believe that statistically, if you look at it, there is a disparity. Um, West County is increasingly diverse, and uh, I think that any disparity in this area is unwarranted and unfortunate. I'm sure that we can do better. Um, I know that in Ellisville they have body cameras on the police, and maybe it would be a good idea to see how that's going. I know that in Baldwin the police officers are concerned with privacy issues, but I think maybe an overall review might be helpful in formulating a real opinion of how to move forward. I believe that um, uh, County Executive Stenger did direct the taxpayer money to be used for the actual officer safety. That's the way I interpreted his comments. I support that, and I hope that the council demands that from the municipalities. Um, getting voter information and constituent information of how it should be spent would be very easy to do with an online form that every police department or every municipality could put out there for, for people to um, 
give their feedback. So I really do hope that the municipalities do the right thing. I agree there is an uh, erosion constantly of trust in the government, and I hope that we can um, prove them wrong this time. Thank you. Next speaker is Susan Sneed. Good evening. I'm Reverend Susan Sneed. I'm with Metropolitan Congregations United, and I'm a resident of Jennings. And I want to reiterate what people have been saying about Prop P from the um, over 50 churches that we represent in the city and the county. Nobody imagined potholes being a part of this conversation. <laughs> um, people very clearly felt like they wanted their police to be served by this. And we have spoken with over 16 police chiefs throughout the county. And when we ask them, what do you want to do with Prop P, the first two things they say is we want to give everybody a raise and we want to buy some body cameras. And so we can't tell you, we know you can't tell the municipalities what to do, but you have control of roughly $40 million of this Prop P money. And we want to make sure that you handle it as transparently as possible. We want to see a line item in the budget. This is what Prop P brought in. This is exactly where it's going. And we want to see the things that the chiefs all around are worried about, and I'm sure Chief Belmar is worried about too, being able to give everybody a raise. There's not a cop in this country being paid enough for what they do. Everybody needs a raise. Everybody should have body cameras. But on that, you need to lend your political will to make sure good body camera legislation is being as written in the state capitol because some of our chiefs want to make sure, as someone said, all the legalities are covered and it should be across the board and it should not be mandatory. Some, we have some people don't want body cameras. We're not going to force them. But everything that our chiefs want, you should be listening for the county as well. No potholes, no broken sidewalks. These are issues that need to be covered. And don't take any money away from the police budget that they have now. Most of our police, and I'm sure the county to a certain extent, does have enough money to work with to begin with, which is why this was passed in the first place. So we just want to reiterate transparency, transparency, transparency on everything that comes in and everything that goes out. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Jennifer Byrd. My name is Jennifer Bird. I live at 9244 Laurel Hill Drive in Crestwood. And well, I guess I'm one of those people that doesn't trust my government. And given history, I looks like I'm on the right track. So we have Prop P. The language was vague. It was a very poorly written bill. And now we have municipalities coming out saying that they're not going to be using the money in a way that most people would have thought intended based on other comments and then comments of our esteemed county executive that this would be for police and public safety and now we have people looking for ways to stretch that definition. So I, I take issue with that. It's a shame that, that, that things worked out the way that they did and my initial distrust of the whole measure was the fact that the county stood to gain more than five times what was stated as needed for uh, doing the raises and, and the updated equipment and so on and so forth. So it looks like another big scoop out of the trough out of my trough and our trough because the people that are hurt first and worst in any sales tax situation are anyone on a fixed income, the elderly, the disabled, and the poor. So I think shame on that and now we're seeing why we should have been more cautious uh, with writing the verbiage for that measure. And that brings me to not trusting my leaders and bad language and not knowing the full scope of the deal before we get it uh, to city county merger. So there, there will be a plan developed and my concern is that we will not be privy to the full depth of the plan and then once a plan is made, words are stretched and I think we can, oh gosh, I supported Bill Clinton, but wasn't he the one that said, depends on what your definition of is is? So if we're stretching definitions, I'm not really interested. I want to know exactly what the deal is. I won't sign a blank mortgage 
I don't like, and I've said it before, stool sample approach to legislation. You got to pass it to see what's in it. Let's be very specific and very cautious. And let me be very specific when I say that the general feeling is that our county executive will be in support of a city county reunification of some kind. I don't believe in uh, remarriage uh, when it looks like we'll be marrying a defunct entity that basically what we're doing is bailing out the city from its decades of failed practices and also doing a bailout for the investor class who bought all the bonds and so forth that stand to potentially lose in in that scenario and we already know that Moody's has downgraded the rating for the city once again just happened in March this year and they specified that the bad outlook was because they don't have enough money coming in that's taxes and they aren't making enough cuts on the expenses that they're already doing that's overspending so I don't trust that we're going to get the full plan and I would encourage each of you to be very vocal and publicly so that we don't need to reunite with a bad entity. Each of us have our own work to do to clean up our own houses before we join hands because I don't want to be the drowning savior that drowns along with the victim. Thank you. Thanks. Next speaker is Christina Heffernan. Good evening. My name is Christina Heffernan, and I live in Chesterfield. Uh, I've enjoyed Creep Curve Park since moving to St. Louis from Southern California about 20 years ago. It's been my home away from home for both myself and my family, whether it's walking, running, biking, and now rowing at the Community Rowing Center. What I'm seeing planned for and happening at the park is of great concern. 40 acres of park have been targeted by developers for a 4,500-size uh, indoor ice complex, which is, as Charles <coughs> mentioned, size of about three mall marts with over a thousand new parking places as well as adopting the parking at Sailboat Cove. I understand the land was purchased with funds from the Federal Land and Water Conservation Fund, which what I understand requires approval of the National Park Service for conversion to indoor recreation. I do not believe that approval has been obtained. I just recently had the opportunity to comment on the environmental assessment where comments are due on July 22nd. However, I was shocked that right after the 4th of July holiday, grading had already started on the <coughs> property and uh, both on east and west side of Marine. As disturbing as that was, as uh, you heard earlier, uh, dozens of trees, all but two, have been taken down south at the south end of the land there on uh, just off of Marine. This grading is, is this grading and tree removal part of the yet to be approved St. Louis Ice Center? If so, isn't that a violation of the Federal Land and Water uh, Conservation Fund restrictions? Uh, we've been told no, um, and that is part of a stormwater drainage project that was previously planned by the Parks Department. If so, why was the public not informed of the drainage project? Typically, the Parks Department is very involving of the public and in, in fact they looked for comments on their master plan just recently uh, example great river greenway has posted their signs for the trail project but we have not seen any signs there and so my fellow rowers as well as users of the park continue to be concerned about what's going on was there a public hearing about this stormwater drainage project where can we see the details and can you share what the goal is of that project can you explain why it seems to follow the exact uh, plan for the st louis ice center as far as how the layout of this facility is planned. Was this drainage project coordinated with the soccer complex where they've already dropped two major drains into the lake to support their 13 artificial turf fields? As you can imagine, my concern continues to grow regarding the impact to the beauty and use of the park, which I enjoy almost on a daily basis. And very historic park and that is enjoyed by athletes, parents, as well as individuals. Whether it's visual or increased traffic, reduced available parking, or increased flooding risk and frequency to the lake and the boathouse that we currently share with Washington University rowing crew, the impact is significant. Uh, you know, please help me preserve our park for the citizens of St. Louis County. Thank you for your attention. Thanks. Next speaker is Patricia McQueen.
Okay. Yes, my name is Patricia McQueen, and I live at 1132 George Street in University City. And I want to thank you, uh, St. Louis County Council members, for letting me speak this evening. Briefly, as a voting citizen, uh, I want to speak on Proposition P, uh, P, which is known as Prop P. I have only three points. The first point is I would like to see more transparency in the, uh, the receipts and distribution of monies raised by Prop P going through the St. Louis County government. And the way to do that is point two. A line item needs to be established in the county budget to track the monies that come from Prop P, both the receipts and the expenditures. And the last point, point three, the monies generated from Prop P should be used for police and public safety. The definition for public safety should not be interpreted as infrastructure. For example, uh, clearing snow, filling potholes, et cetera. But it should be used instead for, let's say, uh, repetitive police training and uh, reducing implicit bias. Um, that would be a wise use of uh, the expenditures for public safety use. Uh, we're coming up on an, an anniversary that really had awakened me, and um, money and police training is very important and costly. So I want to thank you for your time, for listening to me t uh, this evening. Thank you. Thanks. Next speaker is Renee Artman. Good evening, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Last November, County Ordinance 26578 was approved by this council and the county executive. The ordinance called for a public vote on Proposition P. The ballot language, police and public safety, was included in this ordinance. Because of the ordinance wording, you were warned by many of your constituents of two primary concerns. <clears throat> the first concern was that some governments in the county would interpret public safety in broad terms and use the funds for almost anything. The other concern was that governments were supplant current revenues for public safety with the revenue from Pop P. In other words, new money in, new money out, much like we saw with the lottery funds and education. Now we're seeing both of these concerns coming true. In other words, it was a tax increase for anything and everything in government, even though the public was told that it was for police and public safety. This council had a chance to fix the ordinance before it became law and was submitted to the voters. You chose not to. Now it's your responsibility to fix this problem. My suggestion to the council would be to approve legislation repealing Prop P and replace it with what the people thought they were voting on and to protect current revenues from being supplanted by Prop P money. The new Prop P would narrowly define expenditures for the funds, such as police salaries and benefits, police facilities and equipment, prosecutor and courts. That's what police and public safety it truly is. It's not potholes and swimming pool expenses. A penalty should be added to the new ordinance that any government failing to use the funds as this proposition requires would be subject to loss of their Prop P funds. Those forfeited funds would be placed in a county pool to be distributed among those local governments <coughs> using the funds properly. And finally, since this council approved Prop P ordinance and submitted it to the voters, my suggestion is that you immediately file a suit against the local governments for failing to follow the will and the intentions of the voter of St. Louis County. Good evening and thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Karen Meyer. Good evening. Uh, I'm Karen Meyer, and I live at 12793 Parkway Estates Drive, which is in uh, unincorporated St. Louis County District 2. Um, and I'm here to reiterate the uh, concerns about 
Crave Core Park and the ice hockey arena being planned there. Um, my husband and I use the park regularly. We live nearby, and um, you know I see many, many, many people using the park to hike and bike and bird watch. And uh, I just think that that park is very historic uh, for the large lake, and this facility would only detract and not add anything to the park of value. Um, the other concerns include, again, that there's so many other places this could be put uh, on private land, and we, throughout the years we've seen so much of the park change, you know, and so, at least it's outdoor recreation. This would not be outdoor recreation, which again goes against the Land and Water Conservation Act for those acres where this structure is going to be put. So I, you know, I don't understand how this can happen with, with, and especially again, those trees and the field being removed before this is even approved. I mean, I, I don't understand how that can happen. I'm very disappointed. Um, so I'm asking, um, you know, the other thing is the flooding issues. Um, if we're going to have more building in that down there, which is in the plans for Maryland Heights, um, you know, why in the world would you put something in a park where you it's land that can absorb some of that water and help with all those issues that are going to be in the future uh, dealing with? Um, so I just don't think this was a smart proposal and don't understand how it went through so quickly without an, enough input and people. Everything seems to be sort of quiet, just like um, Kat mentioned, you know, what... There's no signs. People don't know what's going on. Why is this all hush-hush? Uh, so, um, and I just hope that you guys will reconsider and um, just say no to this proposal being built there. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Final speaker this evening is Tom Sullivan. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I have a few things to mention. First, I'll say again that I oppose $100,000 for the Magic House as it would be a case of badly misplaced priorities. This council has built up some credibility this year, but it would all be lost if this expenditure is approved. Also, I've requested a copy of the letter the County Prosecutor Bob McCullough gave to the council <coughs> regarding his pension. My request was denied, claiming it was a personnel matter. I don't believe that to be the case. I think the document is a public record. Regarding the controversy over Proposition P money, I don't understand why anyone would criticize the mayor of Chesterfield for planning to do what the tax proposal allows. Those who think the funds should only be spent for the police should take the matter up with County Executive Stinger. He is the one responsible for the wording on the ordinance for Proposition P. The ordinance gave the ballot wording as the, as the purpose was to, quote, improve police and public safety. That can mean a great many things. According to the ordinance, not one additional police officer is required to be hired nor is one cent required to be spent for police salaries. In the proposed legislation the Missouri legislature was considering in 2015 and 2016 that would allow a sales tax increase in unincorporated St. Louis County, the funding was to be for, quote, law enforcement purposes. So why did Mr. Stinger give that same purpose in the ordinance? That's the question he hasn't answered. But I think we all know the answer. Millions could be given for the police and there would still be around $35 million every year to spend as he wanted but there was a big change in the council. You know what can happen to the best laid plans. What I find especially amusing was Mr. Stinger and a county councilor claiming in the Sunday paper that what Chesterfield is doing may violate the law. If the county or anyone else filed a lawsuit against Chesterfield, it would go nowhere. Don't forget what happened to Mr. Stinger's police standards and landlord licensing proposals. Both were rejected by the courts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. This concludes our public forum. Uh, proceed with introduction of bills. Bill number 201, introduced by Councilmember Page, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to accept a grant of up to $20,000 to the Missouri Foundation for Health, appropriating the same for supportive infrastructure improvements related to electronic health records of the Department of Public Health, and authorizing the county executive to execute necessary documents. Bill number 202, introduced by Councilmember Page, an ordinance 
authorizing the county executive to accept grants totaling up to $4,907,030 from the Missouri Department of Economic Development, Division of <coughs> Workforce Development, to support of programs and services related to the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, depositing and appropriating said monies as set forth herein, and authorizing the county executive to execute necessary contracts or other documents. Mr. Chair, that is all the bills. Perfection of bills. Bill number 139 introduced by Councilmember Irby for Councilmember Page. I'll move to hold bill number 139 and that will be the order. Bill number 162 introduced by Councilmembers Page and Harder. Uh, please hold on the order of business. So ordered. Bill number 186 introduced by Councilmember Dolan. I move to perfect bill number 186. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 186 is perfected. Bill number 187 introduced by Councilmember Page. Move to perfect bill number 187. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 187 is perfected. Bill number 188 introduced by Councilmember Page. Move to perfect bill number 188. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 188 is perfected. Bill number 189 introduced by Councilmember Page. Oh. Hold on the order of business, and that will be the order. Bill number 190, introduced by Council Member Page. I'll hold on the order of business, and that will be the order. Bill number 191, introduced by Council Member Trakis. I move to perfect Bill 191. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 191 is perfected. <coughs> Bill number 192, introduced by Council Member Page. Move to perfect bill number 192. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 192 is perfected. Bill number 193, introduced by Council Member Walton Gray. Uh, yes, I'm going to move to drop this bill from the order of business. There are several er errors within this ordinance we've been trying to correct over the past couple of weeks with regards to the lessee name, the square footage, and the address needing uh, to be corrected and we do ask that they um, as soon as possible send new communication uh, with these corrections so order do a substitution I'm sorry do a substitution uh, yeah fine. it's all right we dropped it That's good information. bill number 194 introduced by council member walton gray yes i want to thank the director for coming in today I understand she is working diligently with the uh, camp, which is why we could not reach her. So um, I would move to perfect, perfect bill number 194. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 194 is perfected. Bill number 195 introduced by Council Member Trakis. Move to perfect bill number 195, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 195 is perfected. Bill number 196, introduced by Council Member Trakis. Move to perfect Bill 196. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 196 is perfected. Bill number 197, introduced by Council Member Harder for Council Member Wassinger. I move to perfect Bill number 197. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 197 is perfected. Bill number 198, introduced by <coughs> Council Member Page. Move to perfect Bill number 198. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 198 is perfected. Bill number 199 introduced by council members Walton Gray, Page, and Irby. I move to perfect bill number 199. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries. Bill number 199 is perfected. Bill number 200, introduced by Council Member Trakis. Mr. Chair, we have a substitute bill. Please read the substitute bill. Substitute bill number one for bill number 200, introduced by Council Member Trakis, an ordinance amending the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance and the official zoning district maps by changing the boundaries of the R7 Residence District, the C2 Shopping District, and the C8 Plan Commercial District, approving the application and preliminary plans for the development and amended development in the C8 Plan Commercial District of attractive land Subject to conditions and repealing ordinance number 21,390, PC 09 16, 3623, and 3705, Lee Mayferry Road, LLC. 
Move for adoption of substitute bill number one for bill number 200. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Substitute bill number one for bill number 200 is adopted. That, in, that, in that case, so Mr. Chair, I move to perfect substitute bill number one for bill number 200. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Substitute bill number one for bill number 200 is perfected. Final passage. Substitute bill number one for bill number 121, introduced by Council Member Trakis. Uh, at this time, Mr. Chair, I move to uh, for final passage of bill, substitute bill number one for 121. Second. Second. Before the roll call, Mr. Chairman, if you'll indulge me, I have a statement. Go ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> because of concerns I had about the requested zoning change and stated uses of the former tea time property by McManus Construction Company and Snow Pro Incorporated, I have held consideration and a vote on this matter for several months. During that time, I made inquiries, met and spoke with stakeholders and scrutinized multiple zoning applications and stated uses submitted by the McManus companies. As a result, significant substantive and material uses which were left out of repeated applications for zoning and not disclosed at a public hearing before the Planning Commission were finally brought to light. The discovery of these uses led to the submission, submission of an amended zoning application and referral back to the Planning Commission so it could consider the previously undisclosed uses. This, in turn, resulted in the introduction and adoption of this substitute bill. The substitute bill imposes significant additional conditions on the use of the property, including the construction of a salt storage facility that adheres to St. Louis County Department of Public Works and MSD regulations, and the submission of detailed plans for review and appro approval by MSD that assure compliance with MSD standards and regulations, preventing the interming intermingling of <coughs> de-icing chemicals with stormwater and the discharge of de-icing materials into the stormwater system. When running for council last year, I said I would give close scrutiny to zoning petitions in South County, and I intend to keep that promise. Unfortunately, the process and procedure for reapplication and re-referral to the Planning and Zoning Commission did not provide for another public hearing concerning the previously undisclosed uses for the property. So, District 6 residents did not have an opportunity to comment on these additional uses. However, that is the process as it currently exists. Nonetheless, in the final analysis, my concerns about the full disclosure of and the imposition of appropriate conditions on all intended uses for the property have been addressed. That being the case, Mr. Chair, that's why I've moved for uh, the Final passage of substitute bill number one, and I thank you for your <coughs> indulgence. Thank you. Uh, roll call. Councilmember Irby. Councilmember Page. Aye. Councilmember Wassinger. Aye. Councilmember Gray. Aye. Councilmember Dolan. Aye. Councilmember Trakis. Aye. Councilmember Harder. Aye. Mr. So Chair, substitute bill number one for bill number 121. There are six ayes and one absent. Substitute bill number one for bill number 121 is finally passed. Bill number 153, introduced by Councilmember Page. I move for final passage of bill number 153. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Irby. Councilmember Page. Aye. Councilmember Wassinger. Aye. Councilmember Gray. Aye. Councilmember Dolan. Aye. Councilmember Trakis. Aye. Councilmember Harder. Aye. Mr. Chairman, bill number 153, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill number 153 is finally passed. Bill number 158, introduced by Councilmember Wassinger. I move for final passage of bill number 158. Second. Uh, roll call. Councilmember Irby. Councilmember Page. Um, I have uh, spoken to Councilmember Irby, who uh, wishes she could be here today and would vote in support of this bill. Um, I will vote uh, aye to support <coughs> this bill today. Um, but uh, I would like to go on record to recognize that as we move forward into the next calendar year, that it's my expectation that other um, similar institutions will be allowed to compete for this money and it won't be limited to the Magic House. Councilmember Wassinger? Yes. Um, I, I, I do want to thank uh, Councilman Page, Irby, and, and quite frankly, the whole council for consideration of the matter. I think it's been a healthy discussion that we had hearings and, and kind of shed some light on the hotel motel tax in general 
and I understand that Kitty Radcliffe is drafting some provisions for consideration if other organizations want to apply as well. And, and I think that's that's a good thing. So I thank you and I vote aye. Councilmember Gray? I'm going to abstain at this time. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember Trakis? No. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chair, on Bill Number 158, there are four ayes, one absent, and one abstention. Bill Number 158. I'm sorry, yeah. one no. I'm sorry. Bill Number 158 is finally passed. Bill Number 168, introduced by Councilmember Irby for Councilmember Page. Um, I move to uh, move <coughs> for final passage of Bill Number 168. Second. Roll call. Roll call. Council Member Irby, Council Member Page. Um, I will vote aye. I um, understand that Councilwoman Irby has met um, with the applicant and uh, uh, has had her questions answered. Council Member Wassinger? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Dolan? Aye. Council Member Trakis? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Mr. Chairman, Bill Number 168, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill Number 168 is finally passed. <coughs> bill Number 174, introduced by Council Member Page. Move for final passage of Bill Number 174. Second. Second. Roll call. Council Member Irby? Council Member Page? Aye. Council Member Wassinger? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Dolan? Aye. Council Member Trakis? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Mr. Chair, Bill Number 174, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill number 174 is finally passed. Bill number 175, introduced by Council Member Page. Move for final passage of Bill number 175. Second. Roll call. Council Member Irby. Council Member Page. Aye. Council Member Wassinger. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Dolan. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Mr. Chair, on Bill number 175, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill number 175 is finally passed. Bill number 176, introduced by Council Member Page. Move for final passage of Bill number 176. Second. Second. Roll call. <coughs> Council Member Irby, Council Member Page. Aye. Council Member Wassinger. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Dolan. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Mr. Chairman, Bill number 176, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill number 176 is finally passed. Bill number 177, introduced by Council Member Page. Move for final passage of Bill number 177. Second. Roll call. Council Member Irby, Council Member Page. Aye. Council Member Wassinger. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Dolan. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Mr. Chair, Bill number 177, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill number 177 is finally passed. Bill number 178, introduced by Council Member Page. Move for final passage, Bill number 178. Second. Roll call. Council Member Irby. Council Member Page. Aye. Council Member Wassinger. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Dolan. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, Bill number 178, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill number 178 is finally passed. Bill number 179, introduced by Council Member Page. Move for final passage, Bill number 179. Second. Roll call. Council Member Irby. Council Member Page. Aye. Council Member Wassinger. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Dolan. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Mr. Chair, Bill number 179, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill number 179 is finally passed. Bill number 180, introduced by Council Member Dolan. Move for final passage, Bill number 180. Second. Roll call. Council Member Irby, Council Member Page, Aye. Council Member Wassinger, Aye. Council Member Gray, Aye. Council Member Dolan, Aye. Council Member Trakis, Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Mr. Chair, Bill Number 180, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill Number 180 is finally passed. Bill Number 181, introduced by Council Member Irby. I move for final passage of Bill Number 181. Second. Roll call. Council Member Irby, Council Member Page. Aye. Council Member Wassinger. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Dolan. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Mr. Chairman, Bill Number 181, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill Number 181 is finally passed. Bill Number 182, introduced by Council Member Page. Move for final passage of Bill Number 182. Second. Roll call. 
Council Member Irby, Council Member Page. Aye. Council Member Wassinger. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Dolan. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Mr. Chairman, Bill Number 182. There are six ayes and one absent. Bill Number 182 is finally passed. Bill Number 183 introduced by Council Member Irby. We have had a couple of Council Members asked to hold this uh, bill. Um, while we collect more information, I think that's reasonable. Um, so bill number 183 uh, relating to um, pensions will be held on the order of business. Bill number 184 introduced by council member Irby. Move for final passage of bill number 184. Second. Roll call. Council member Irby. Council member Page. Aye. Council member Wassinger. Aye. Council member Gray. Aye. Council member Dolan. Aye. Council member Trakis. Aye. Council member Harder. Aye. Mr. Chairman, Bill number 184, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill number 184 is finally passed. Bill number 185, introduced by Council member Irby. I move for final passage of Bill number 185. Second. Roll call. Council member Irby. Council member Page. Aye. Council member Wassinger. Aye. Council member Gray. Aye. Council member Dolan. Aye. Council member Trakis. Aye. Council member Harder. Aye. Mr. Chairman, Bill number 185, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill number 185 is uh, finally passed. We have nothing under resolutions this evening, Mr. Chair, so we'll move to unfinished business. Under unfinished business, item number one. Um, hold on the order of business. Um, same motion through item number four, and that will be the order. Item number five, seventh district. Uh, hold on the order of business. So ordered. And moving on to new business, Mr. Chair, we have four prepared orders this evening. I move for the adoption of orders number one through four. Second. Roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Um, orders one through four are adopted. Motion to adjourn. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Did you want to mention that the one order is about the meeting that being? Oh, thank you for that reminder. Uh, the meeting next week um, um, is postponed to a date in the future, and the next time this council will meet will be two weeks from today at 6 p.m. Thank you for the reminder. All in favor of the motion to adjourn? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, we're adjourned. <laughs>